Stoicism is a school of Hellenistic philosophy founded in Athens by Zeno of Citium in the early 3rd century BC. The Stoics taught that destructive emotions resulted from errors in judgment, and the active relationship between cosmic determinism and human freedom, and the belief that it is virtuous to maintain a will that is in accord with nature. Because of this, the Stoics presented their philosophy as a way of life, and they thought that the best indication of an individual's philosophy was not what a person said but how that person behaved. To live a good life, one had to understand the rules of the natural order since they taught that everything was rooted in nature. Later Stoics, such as Seneca and Epictetus, emphasized that, because virtue is sufficient for happiness, a sage was immune to misfortune. This belief is similar to the meaning of the phrase Stoic calm, though the phrase does not include the radical ethical Stoic views that only a sage can be considered truly free, and that all moral corruptions are equally vicious. From its founding, Stoic doctrine was popular with a following in Roman Greece and throughout the Roman Empire, including the Emperor Marcus Aurelius, until the closing of all pagan philosophy schools in AD 529 by order of the Emperor Justinian I, who perceived them as being at odds with Christian faith. Neo-Stoicism was a syncretic philosophical movement, joining Stoicism and Christianity, influenced by Justus Lipsius. Basic Tenets The Stoics provided a unified account of the world, consisting of formal logic, monistic physics and naturalistic ethics. Of these, they emphasized ethics as the main focus of human knowledge, though their logical theories were of more interest for later philosophers. Stoicism teaches the development of self-control and fortitude as a means of overcoming destructive emotions. The philosophy holds that becoming a clear and unbiased thinker allows one to understand the universal reason. A primary aspect of Stoicism involves improving the individual's ethical and moral well-being. Virtue consists in a will that is in agreement with nature. This principle also applies to the realm of interpersonal relationships, to be free from anger, envy, and jealousy, and to accept even slaves as equals of other men. Because all men are like a products of nature, the Stoic ethic espouses a deterministic perspective in regard to those who lack Stoic virtue. Cleanthus once opined that the wicked man is like a dog tied to a cart and compelled to go wherever it goes, a Stoic of virtue, by contrast would amend his will to suit the world and remain, in the words of Epictetus, sick and yet happy, in peril and yet happy, dying and yet happy, in exile and happy, in disgrace and happy, thus positing a completely autonomous individual will, and at the same time a universe that is a rigidly deterministic single whole. This viewpoint was later described as classical pantheism. Stoicism became the foremost popular philosophy among the educated elite in the Hellenistic world and the Roman Empire, to the point where, in the words of Gilbert Murray, nearly all the successors of Alexander professed themselves Stoics. History Beginning at around 3001 BC, Zeno taught philosophy at the Stoa Poikil, from which his philosophy got its name. Unlike the other schools of philosophy, such as the Epicureans, Zeno chose to teach his philosophy in a public space, which was a colonnade overlooking the central gathering place of Athens, the Agora. Zeno's ideas developed from those of the Cynics, whose founding father, Antisthenes, had been a disciple of Socrates. Zeno's most influential follower was Chrysippus, who was responsible for the molding of what is now called Stoicism. Later Roman Stoics focused on promoting a life in harmony within the universe, over which one has no direct control. Scholars usually divide the history of Stoicism into three phases. Early Stoa, from the founding of the school by Zeno to Antipater. Middle Stoa, including Panaetius and Posidonius. Late Stoa, including Musonius Rufus, Seneca, Epictetus, and Marcus Aurelius. No complete work by any Stoic philosopher survives from the first two phases of Stoicism. Only Roman texts from the late Stoa survive. Logic 
Propositional logic Diodorus Cronus, who was one of Zeno's teachers, is considered the philosopher who first introduced and developed an approach to logic now known as propositional logic. This is an approach to logic based on statements or propositions, rather than terms, making it very different from Aristotle's term logic. Later, Chrysippus developed a system that became known as Stoic logic and included a deductive system, Stoic syllogistic, which was considered a rival to Aristotle's syllogistic. New interest in Stoic logic came in the 20th century, when important developments in logic were based on propositional logic. Suzanne Bobzine wrote, the many close similarities between Chrysippus of philosophical logic and that of Gottlob Frege are especially striking. Bob Zine also notes that Chrysippus wrote over 300 books on logic. On virtually any topic logic today concerns itself with, including speech act theory, sentence analysis, singular and plural expressions. Types of predicates, indexicals, existential propositions, sentential connectives, negations, disjunctions, conditionals, logical consequence, valid argument forms, theory of deduction, propositional logic, modal logic, tense logic, epistemic logic, logic of suppositions logic of imperatives, ambiguity and logical paradoxes, categories the Stoics held that all being, though not all things, is corporeal. They accepted the distinction between concrete bodies and abstract ones, but rejected Aristotle's belief that purely incorporeal being exists. Thus they accepted Anaxagoras' idea that if an object is hot, it is because some part of a universal heat body had entered the object. But, unlike Aristotle, they extended the idea to cover all accidents. Thus, if an object is red, it would be because some part of a universal red body had entered the object. They held that there were four categories. Substance the primary matter, formless substance. That things are made of quality the way matter is organized to form an individual object, in Stoic physics, a physical ingredient which informs the matter somehow disposed particular characteristics not present within the object, such as size, shape, action, and posture somehow disposed in relation to something characteristics related to other phenomena, such as the position of an object within time and space relative to other objects epistemology the Stoics propounded that knowledge can be attained. Through the use of reason, truth can be distinguished from fallacy, even if, in practice, only an approximation can be made. According to the Stoics, the senses constantly receive sensations, pulsations that pass from objects through the senses to the mind, where they leave an impression in the imagination. The mind has the ability to judge, approve or reject an impression, enabling it to distinguish a true representation of reality from one that is false. Some impressions can be assented to immediately, but others can only achieve varying degrees of hesitant approval, which can be labeled belief or opinion. It is only through reason that we achieve clear comprehension and conviction. Certain and true knowledge, achievable by the Stoic sage, can be attained only by verifying the conviction with the expertise of one's peers and the collective judgment of humankind. Make for yourself a definition or description of the thing which is presented to you, so as to see distinctly what kind of a thing it is in its substance, in its nudity, in its complete entirety, and tell yourself its proper name, and the names of the things of which it has been compounded, and into which it will be resolved. For nothing is so productive of elevation of mind as to be able to examine methodically and truly every object that is presented to you in life and always to look at things so as to see at the same time what kind of universe this is, and what kind of use everything performs in it, and what value everything has with reference to the whole. Marcus Aurelius, Meditations, i.e. 11 Physics and Cosmology According to the Stoics, the universe is a material, reasoning substance, known as God or Nature, which the Stoics divided into two classes the active and the passive. The passive substance is matter, which lies sluggish, a substance ready for any use. 
but sure to remain unemployed if no one sets it in motion. The active substance, which can be called fate, or universal reason, is an intelligent ether or primordial fire, which acts on the passive matter. The universe itself is God and the universal outpouring of its soul, it is this same world's guiding principle, operating in mind and reason, together with the common nature of things and the totality that embraces all existence, then the foreordained might and necessity of the future, then fire and the principle of ether, then those elements whose natural state is one of flux and transition, such as water, earth, and air, then the sun, the moon, the stars, and the universal existence in which all things are contained. Chrysippus, in Cicero, De Natura Deorum, I, 39 Everything is subject to the laws of fate, for the universe acts according to its own nature, and the nature of the passive matter it governs. The souls of people and animals are emanations from this primordial fire, and are, likewise, subject to fate. Constantly regard the universe as one living being, having one substance and one soul, and observe how all things have reference to one perception, the perception of this one living being, and how all things act with one movement, and how all things are the cooperating causes of all things that exist, observe too the continuous spinning of the thread and the structure of the web. Marcus Aurelius, Meditations, IV. 40 individual souls are perishable by nature, and can be transmuted and diffused, assuming a fiery nature by being received into the seminal reason of the universe, since right reason is the foundation of both humanity and the universe. It follows that the goal of life is to live according to reason, that is, to live a life according to nature, ethics and virtues. The ancient Stoics are often misunderstood because the terms they used pertain to different concepts in the past than they do today. The word, Stoic, has come to mean, unemotional, or indifferent to pain, because Stoic ethics taught freedom from, passion, by following, reason. The Stoics did not seek to extinguish emotions, rather, they sought to transform them by a resolute ascesis that enables a person to develop clear judgment and inner calm. Logic, reflection, and concentration were the methods of such self-discipline. Borrowing from the cynics, the foundation of Stoic ethics is that good lies in the state of the soul itself, in wisdom and self-control. Stoic ethics stress the rule, follow where reason leads, one must therefore strive to be free of the passions, bearing in mind that the ancient meaning of passion was anguish, or suffering, that is, passively, reacting to external events, which is somewhat different from the modern use of the word. A distinction was made between pathos which is normally translated as passion, propathos or instinctive reaction and new pathos which is the mark of the Stoic sage. The Upadhyaya are feelings that result from correct judgment in the same way as passions result from incorrect judgment. The idea was to be free of suffering through apathy or peace of mind, where peace of mind was understood in the ancient sense, being objective or having clear judgment, and the maintenance of equanimity in the face of life's highs and lows. For the Stoics, reason meant not only using logic, but also understanding the processes of nature, the logos, or universal reason, inherent in all things. Living according to reason and virtue, they help, is to live in harmony with the divine order of the universe. In recognition of the common reason and essential value of all people, the four cardinal virtues of the Stoic philosophy is a classification derived from the teachings of Plato. Wisdom, courage, justice, temperance. Following Socrates, the Stoics held that unhappiness and evil are the results of human ignorance of the reason in nature. If someone is unkind, it is because they are unaware of their own universal reason, which leads to the conclusion of kindness. The solution to evil and unhappiness, then, is the practice of Stoic philosophy to examine one's own judgments and behavior and determine where they diverge from the universal reason of nature. The Stoics accepted that suicide was permissible for the wise person in circumstances that might prevent him from living a virtuous life. 
Plutarch held that accepting a life under tyranny would have compromised Cato's self-consistency as a Stoic and impaired his freedom to make the honorable moral choices. Suicide could be justified if one fell victim to severe pain or disease, but otherwise suicide would usually be seen as a rejection of one's social duty. The doctrine of things indifferent, in philosophical terms, things that are indifferent are outside the application of moral law, that is without tendency to either promote or obstruct moral ends, actions neither required nor forbidden by the moral law, or that do not affect morality, are called morally indifferent. The doctrine of things indifferent arose in the Stoic school as a corollary of its diametric opposition of virtue and vice. As a result of this dichotomy, a large class of objects were left unassigned and thus regarded as indifferent. Eventually three subclasses of things indifferent developed. Things to prefer because they assist life according to nature, things to avoid because they hinder it, and things indifferent in the narrower sense. The principle of adiaphora was also common to the cynics and skeptics. The doctrine of things indifferent was revived during the Renaissance by Philip Melanchthon. Spiritual exercise philosophy for a Stoic is not just a set of beliefs or ethical claims. It is a way of life involving constant practice and training. Stoic philosophical and spiritual practices included logic, Socratic dialogue and self-dialogue, contemplation of death training attention to remain in the present moment, and daily reflection on everyday problems and possible solutions. Philosophy for a Stoic is an active process of constant practice and self-reminder. In his meditations, Marcus Aurelius defined several such practices. For example, in Book 2, I say to yourself in the early morning, I shall meet today ungrateful, violent, treacherous, envious, uncharitable men, all of the ignorance of real good and ill. I can neither be harmed by any of them, for no man will involve me in wrong, nor can I be angry with my kinsman or hate him, for we have come into the world to work together. Prior to Aurelius, Epictetus in his discourses, distinguished between three types of act, judgment, desire, and inclination. According to French philosopher Pierre Hadot, Epictetus identifies these three acts with logic, physics, and ethics respectively. Hadot writes that in the meditations, each maxim develops either one of these very characteristic topoi, i.e., acts or two of them or three of them, the practices of spiritual exercises have been described as influencing those of reflective practice by Seamus Mack. Suigna. Parallels between Stoic spiritual exercises and modern cognitive behavioral therapy have been detailed at length in Robertson's The Philosophy of Cognitive Behavioral Therapy. Social Philosophy. A distinctive feature of Stoicism is its cosmopolitanism. All people are manifestations of the one universal spirit and should, according to the Stoics, live in brotherly love and readily help one another. In the Discourses, Epictetus comments on man's relationship with the world. Each human being is primarily a citizen of his own commonwealth, but he is also a member of the great city of gods and men. Whereof the city political is only a copy, this sentiment echoes that of Diogenes of Sinope, who said, I am not an Athenian or a Corinthian, but a citizen of the world. They held that external differences such as rank and wealth are of no importance in social relationships. Instead they advocated the brotherhood of humanity and the natural equality of all human beings. Stoicism became the most influential school of the Greco-Roman world, and produced a number of remarkable writers and personalities, such as Cato the Younger and Epictetus. In particular, they were noted for their urging of clemency towards slaves.